The objectives of this study include to describe the scanning technique and sonographic appearance of parathyroid adenoma, to understand the role of color Doppler in assessing parathyroid adenoma and to understand the role of nucleosintigraphy in parathyroid imaging. This slide describes the anatomic location of the parathyroids. As we all know, there are four parathyroid glands, two superior and two inferior, and 25 percent are located in the superior mediastinum in the event they are ectopic in location. This slide just demonstrates the uh, location of the parathyroids posteriorly. This is from the Nettes uh, diagram. This slide demonstrates the blood supply to the superior and inferior parathyroid gland. Superior parathyroid gland derives its blood supply from the superior thyroid artery and the inferior parathyroid gland derives its blood supply from the inferior thyroidal artery. When parathyroid glands are ectopic, they usually lie in the lower neck or in the anterior mediastinum and inferior parathyroid glands have a higher chance of being ectopic. The parathyroids can also be classified depending upon their location. They can be normal in location within mediastinum, retropharyngeal or intrathyroidal. We know that uh, parathyroid imaging is usually indicated or asked for when patients present with hyperparathyroidism. The primary parathyroidism, hyperparathyroidism is usually secondary to a solitary adenoma and 10 to 15 percent is secondary to hyperplasia and only less than 4 percent is secondary to parathyroid carcinoma. The secondary hyperparathyroidism is predominantly by uh, secondary to renal failure and rarely secondary to paraneoplastic syndrome. There is high association of hyperparathyroidism in patients with MEN1 syndrome as shown in this slide. More than 90 percent have hyperparathyroidism in MEN1 syndrome and approximately 10 to 30 percent have hyperparathyroidism in MEN2A syndrome. The ultrasound technique for the evaluation of parathyroid involves utilization of a high frequency linear transducer of uh, 10 to 14 megahertz with broadband capability and color flow Doppler capability. Scan is performed in transverse plane from hyoid bone to the thoracic inlet and we know that the normal parathyroid cannot be seen by ultrasound as they are less than 4 millimeter in size and there are many other entities in that location which could be mistaken for parathyroid gland such as esophagus or lymph node and we will go over these false negative and positives in the next uh, coming slides. The ultrasound appearance of uh, parathyroid adenoma or carcinoma or hyperplastic uh, parathyroid gland is similar on ultrasound as uh, described on this uh, slide and ultrasound cannot differentiate between benign or malignant lesions. This is an example in gray scale showing a right lower pole parathyroid adenoma predominantly hypoechoic in appearance. This is another example of a parathyroid adenoma in the left parathyroid gland in the inferior pole and the maximum size of this is about 2 centimeters. Is there a role of color flow Doppler sonography in the evaluation of parathyroid gland? Yes, there is a definite role of color flow Doppler sonography in its evaluation. In a study by Wolf R.J. al which was published in JUM in 1994, they described the presence of an arc between 90 degree and 270 degree of the parathyroid mass and it was seen in 20 of 32 patients. This is an example describing the peripheral arc. You can see the first slide is a grayscale image of a hypoechoic mass which is confirmed parathyroid adenoma with a color flow Doppler demonstrating the arc sign. The additional sign of an extra thyroidal artery was described by M. J. Lane et al. and was published in AJR in 1998 
and it was seen in 35 of the 42 adenomas in their study. Additionally, polar vascularity and vascular asymmetry of the thyroid gland can be seen as shown in this slide and this was published uh, by Scott B. Reader in JUM in 2002. This is an example of a polar distribution of color flow. The first two images show the grayscale appearance of a parathyroid adenoma and this color flow shows the uh, polar sign as uh, we described in the previous slide. This is an additional example of color flow Doppler polar sign. This is an additional image describing the polar sign once again. As we mentioned before, there are many reasons of false positive examination when you evaluate parathyroid gland. The commonest cause actually is esophagus, we will see the examples. Cervical lymph nodes can be mistaken for this gland, longus coli muscle or thyroid nodule. There are false negative results and they are usually secondary to uh, minimally enlarged adenoma, multinodular thyroid goiter and ectopic location of the parathyroid adenoma. This is an example demonstrating the esophagus posteriorly which has a classic gut signature which may give rise to a false positive result and this should not be mistaken for a parathyroid adenoma. This case is interesting as you can see the first slide CT where it shows a large mass with a, a well defined uh, margin it was called to be parathyroid adenoma or a mass subsequently ultrasound was performed you can see on a gray scale this is arising from the thyroid gland and is not a parathyroid it is it was confirmed to be an exophytic colloid nodule. I certainly want to mention about parathyroid carcinoma which is an unusual uh, entity however when uh, present it is usually of a larger size and may be palpable in one third of the cases and other characteristics of this are mentioned in this uh, uh, slide and I just want to emphasize that parathyroidectomy is not always successful. Parathyroid cysts can be seen and their origin is attributed to various uh, uh, reasons as described in this uh, slide. But if you can do a fine needle aspiration and demonstrate PTH that can certainly diagnose uh, the cyst uh, and its origin. What are the limitations of a ultrasound evaluation of the parathyroid gland and why are they? Number one, ultrasound is not able to detect the ectopic nodules. It is unable to characterize the intrathyroid parathyroid nodules and if there is a concomitant presence of thyroid disease which is seen in up to 40 percent of patients with parathyroid uh, disease, it is very difficult to identify parathyroid adenomas. The sensitivity of ultrasound is about 34 to 92 percent. It is very, very variable because the uh, many factors are involved in it such as the experience of the operator, ectopic location and presence of the thyroid disease. Specificity is very consistent is about 92 to 97 percent. Nucleosintigraphy is an additional technique which is also performed to evaluate parathyroid uh, gland disease processes. In older times subtraction of thallium 2001 chloride from technetium 99 m per technetate was done which is no more performed. The community standard is a double phase scintigraphy with technetium 99 system maybe and the current clinical practice is a routine use of planar and spect imaging at 10 minutes and 2 hours. Now the technetium 99 system maybe is taken up by both thyroid and the disease parathyroid uh, gland. The normal washout from thyroid and parathyroid is in about 30 minutes and the peak activity is in 4 to 6 minutes. The washout from the diseased parathyroid is delayed because the mitochondria rich oxophil cell content of the tumor therefore uh, there is a differential washout between the uh, thyroid and parathyroid and that is how the system may be uh, is utilized for diagnosing the disease. This is just to summarize the clearance time is based upon the differential washout. The mechanism is mitochondrial, physical half life of system may be 
is 6 hours, the photon energy is 140 keV and imaging protocol is at uh, 10 minutes and delayed images at 2 to 3 hours. This is an example uh, demonstrating the presence of a ectopic parathyroid adenoma. This is an additional patient uh, which you can see on a pinhole a 2 hour image on the left hand side. The uh, parathyroid adenoma can be seen uh, so well. Uh, pinhole images are useful uh, to see and improve the resolution of these images. What are false uh, uh, positives uh, in nucleus integraphy? Multinodular goiter, Hashimoto thyroiditis and thyroid carcinoma including the uptake by lymph nodes and false negatives as given uh, below in this uh, slide. How good is nucleus integraphy? You can see the sensitivity is about 89 to 95 percent in patients who are undergoing uh, or prior to the surgery and only about 59 percent in those uh, who are undergoing repeat surgery. This is an example. You can see the parathyroid ectopic adenoma in uh, CT and corresponding uh, system AB image demonstrates the ectopic location. What are the differences in uh, cost? The ultrasound is non-ionizing and uh, certainly system may be is ionizing. Ultrasound is much cheaper as compared to the system may be study. Uh, ultrasound has superior anatomic resolution and does not need appointment whereas in nucleus uh, study the anatomic resolution is poor and appointments are necessary. This was a very uh, interesting study which was done by Maria Laura and was uh, published in radiology in 2000 and uh, they were able to identify 23 of 24 parathyroid nodules uh, utilizing a combination of ultrasound and uh, scintigraphy. I thought it was worthwhile presenting uh, that into this discussion and they did have 5 of 6 cases where ultrasound was positive and scintigraphy was negative but that involved a nodule less than 1 cm in size and there was one case uh, utilizing both techniques uh, which provided negative result and that was secondary to a large hyperplastic gland with white cystic and necrotic areas. So, overall sensitivity in this uh, study uh, combining the ultrasound and scintigraphy was 96 percent uh, versus 67 percent for ultrasound alone and 71 percent for scintigraphy alone. The specificity of the combination of ultrasound and scintigraphy was uh, 83 uh, percent. The presentation would not be complete without the mention of a minimally invasive radio guided parathyroidectomy uh, procedure which is nowadays the standard of care on average takes about 17 minutes is performed through a 3 fourth inch to 1 inch incision. Patient goes home in 1 to 2 hours and there are no stitches to remove. This is a live uh, image of a patient. The first image shows the how the patient is prepped and uh, draped. Second shows the suture uh, going through the inferior thyroid artery and the third image demonstrates the removal of the parathyroid gland. How does the surgeon know that they have removed the parathyroid adenoma? After removal of the adenoma, they perform the PTH blood level and uh, after about 15 minutes there is a 50 percent fall in the PTH level that is how they get to know that the surgery was uh, successful. But how do they localize this? They as I mentioned patient comes to the uh, department and gets a system maybe injection then goes to the OR and then they use the nuclear probe to localize the uptake of the system maybe by the parathyroid uh, gland and they make an incision over it and this principle is because we know that most of the hyperparathyroidism uh, involves only one gland and not all the glands. In conclusion, I would uh, say that ultrasound is operator dependent and results are variable. Color flow Doppler helps in localization. Ultrasound cannot differentiate parathyroid adenoma and carcinoma. Technetium 99 dual phase imaging is better in imaging the ectopic parathyroid gland and combined ultrasound imaging and nucleus integraphy have better uh, results. Thank you for your time.